Welcome to Electron Line. Here's another very interesting example for which we can utilize the concept of torque to solve this. Let's say we have a car that's driving quite fast in a circular path. One of two things can happen. If there's not a lot of friction between the tires and the road, the car will simply slip off the road. But if there's plenty of friction, if there's dry conditions, you have good quality tires, driving too fast can actually cause the car to flip over. This is especially true when you have trucks that have a heavy load where the center of gravity is pretty high on the truck. What we're trying to do here is find the maximum velocity that the car can drive before the car will tip over. Assuming that the velocity of the car is V, the radius of the turn is R, the mass of the car is M, and the height to the center mass is equal to H. That means that the distance from the center mass to the ground right here, that would be equal to H. So how do we do that? Well, we have to realize, just as the moment that the car begins to tip over, there will be no weight pushing down on the car on, the, on this side of the tire here, assuming that the, the, the path of the car is in this direction, so the centripetal force, or I should say the centrifugal force, will push the car to the side like this. Notice there will be no weight on this, on this um, wheel. What we can then do is put the pivot point right there, let's call that pivot point A, and at that very moment, at the moment that the car is ready to tip over, we can say that the sum of all the torques about point A add up to zero, because that would be what we call an equilibrium moment, so to speak. Let's find what Vmax is in that particular case. Summing up all the torques, zero is equal to the centrifugal force would cause a clockwise turn, a clockwise motion, that's a negative torque, negative the centrifugal force, times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force, which is this line, to the pivot point, that would be the distance h. Plus, now we have the weight of the car, which causes a counterclockwise torque, that's a positive torque, plus mg, times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, that's this distance right here. If we call this the width of the car, then that would be half the width of the car. Hmm, do I want to use W because that looks like weight? Maybe I'll just call it D, the distance for the width of the car. That would be half the distance of the width of the car, D divided by 2. Now what we want to do here is find the equation for the centripetal force, which is the same as the equation for the centrifugal force. 0 is equal to minus M times V squared over R, and that's where the V is that we're trying to find the maximum value for. Again, this will be the maximum uh, velocity because it's at the moment that the car is ready to tip over that there's no weight pushing down on the wheel right here. There's no reactionary floor, uh, force on the floor at this moment, at that point. mv squared of r times h plus mgd divided by 2. Now we have to solve this for v, so let's move this equation to the other side. Notice also that the m's cancel out on both sides. It doesn't matter what the mass of the car is. Moving to the other side, we get a positive V squared divided by R times H is equal to GD divided by 2. Moving the R over here and the H down here, we get V squared is equal to GD times R divided by 2 times H. And finally, if we take the square root of both sides, we get V is equal to the square root of G times D times R divided by 2 H, and that is the maximum velocity the car can drive before tipping over relative to the width of the car, relative to the radius of the curve, and relative to the height to the center of mass. Now let's explore those three variables. The width of the car. The wider you make the car, the farther, the farther you space the tires apart from each other, the larger the maximum velocity can be. So a car that's less likely to tip over is a car that has the tires farther apart. Secondly, the radius of the curve. The greater you make the radius of the curve, the less likely the car will tip over. That's why on freeway en entrance and freeway off ramps, you want the radius of turn to be as great as possible, less likely for cars to tip over as they're driving around, or slide off the road when the road is slick or has eyes on it. And finally, the height to the center of mass. The greater the height, the lower the maximum velocity. 
That is why you want the center of gravity, center mass of the object, the vehicle, to be as low as possible so that it's less likely to tip over. The higher the center mass, the higher the center of gravity of the car, the more likely it is to tip over. If this becomes a H becomes a larger number, V max becomes smaller, so you'll, you'll tip over at smaller velocities. And that's again how we use the concept of torque to solve a very practical problem like this.